Well, we don't know that for sure, but what we're waiting for is a clue from government. Uh, at level four, the university has to remain closed. Uh, in a few weeks' time, if the government reduces the lockdown, uh, sorry, the, the alert level from level four to level three, we hope to be able to open parts of the university for some functions at that stage. For example, we have asked government to be able to get our research going again at, a, at level three so that our research postgraduate students can get back to work as long as they maintain the physical distancing requirements uh, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Uh, at that level three, there will still be major restrictions on large gatherings, and so we're imagining we'll still be maintaining our lectures uh, through online delivery, but parts of the university may be open at level three. So uh, still up in the air, I'm afraid, so no concrete answer to that. Uh, we, we, like you, were just waiting on government's view on when the level four finishes and we move down to level three and level two alert levels. I think we have to brace ourselves for the fact that that could happen. Uh, it, it will happen if the COVID-19 epidemic is not in control uh, within the four weeks of the current lockdown. So if that's the case, then again, we just wait to see what um, alert level the government identifies. And if it remains at level four, we will have to continue to keep the university closed and to maintain all of our teaching at our distance and to maintain a pause on our research programs. Uh, it will get increasingly more difficult as time goes on. I do understand that but we have no choice if we're going to defeat the COVID-19 epidemic and protect lives. Uh, at alert level four, uh, the campus is closed and has to remain so. As those alert levels drop down the scale, we hope to be able to open different parts of the campus for different functions uh, so that we can get life back to normal. What we're expecting is that government will reduce the COVID alert level uh, sequentially. So we'll move over the next few months to the, over, and the course of a year perhaps to level um, four, from level th to level three, to level two, and then eventually to level one. Now, as we go down in those alert levels, the campus will begin to look more and more normal and life will come back to normal for us um, in our teaching and research programs and our events and all the things that make a lively campus. But that might take quite some time. We've offered to those uh, people who are affected by COVID-19 um, a fees scholarship to cover the fees for trimester two. Now, the reason to do that was that there's a lot of people being made redundant in our community, uh, and we want them to have no barrier to come to the university to study. Uh, of course, if you're made redundant, then financially you are challenged. You may have dependents who are due to come to the university uh, and could potentially no longer afford to do so. And so we wanted to remove any barrier to study for those affected by COVID-19. Now the offer um, didn't make sense to our current students because a large number of our current students are already studying for free because of the first year free program. And so to uh, support our current students, what we've done is um, expanded the hardship fund so that students who are our current students who are experiencing hardship as a result of COVID can apply to our hardship fund. And we've uncapped that so that uh, as much of, uh, as, as many of our students uh, who need it will get support through that hardship fund. So I'd encourage you as a current student, if you are experiencing difficulties related to COVID-19 or, or any other matter, then get in there and apply to that hardship fund and we'll do our best to support you through this tough time. We haven't made those decisions as yet. Um, we are simply at the moment trying to keep the university going uh, through this current trimester. 
understand our financial position, uh, which has been affected by many different um, happenings. So at the moment, what we're trying to do is understand what uh, that financial impact uh, amounts to, uh, how we can mitigate the financial challenges, uh, and from there we'll be in a position to decide what we're going to be doing with um, student fees into um, the next couple of trimesters and next couple of years. Thank you very much all. Um, uh, keep strong, uh, keep studying. Uh, we need you to stay connected and keep your learning going. Uh, we have got uh, good systems to ensure that we can reach out to you online and continue to teach online and we will keep your academic progress going uh, so that you will still graduate from your degrees and have the careers and, and lives that uh, you had envisioned. But to do that, you've got to stay connected and it's not easy when you're studying at a distance, we fully understand. But good luck, stay strong, look after yourselves. Kia ora. Kia ora koutou. Uh, like me, you're probably um, sitting at home somewhere uh, in a corner of your flat or, or in a hostel or tucked away in a spare room somewhere. So um, I hope you've been able to settle in well and now, like all of us, beginning to turn your attention to what next. Um, I'm Wendy Lana, I'm the Provost for those of you who don't know me and it's a, it's a great pleasure to be able to be part of the discussion and help answer some of the questions that people have submitted to us. Um, we'll, we'll all understand that last week was just a mad scramble as we all tried to get ourselves home and get ourselves safe. And that was the, the most important thing for all of us. Um, and in that context, doing the shift that we're all doing now to being online, this new world of mediated communications, we knew that was going to take a little bit of time. And we knew that there'd be some troubleshooting that we needed to do, that people needed to have devices, they needed to know how to use those devices, and they needed some time to get to a point where we could pick up our normal ways of doing things. And when we began to think about that and realise that Easter was also on the horizon, it just made sense to not add extra pressure in what was already an extraordinarily pressured situation, to just give people time to get settled, get sorted, change what needed to be changed in order that when we resume teaching again, we do so in the best possible way uh, for everyone, staff and students. Well, of course, none of us quite know what this is going to involve. Um, some of you, if you're paying attention to the uh, regular announcements we, we're getting from our Prime Minister uh, and the like, you'll notice that the language has shifted from four weeks to some weeks. So we simply don't know quite what we're looking at and whether the lockdown's going to work and uh, what all of that will mean. So in that context, we thought it was much better to plan for the rest of the trimester than it was to make a short-term arrangement that we then would have had to have changed again. Well, again, the shorter answer is we just don't know yet. We're fully focused on trimester one and, and getting ourselves to the end of trimester one, ensuring that everyone has that uh, best possible experience, again, both for staff and students. And as we begin to understand in more detail what things are likely to look like in June, uh, then we'll be in a much better place to be making decisions about trimester two. Students with limited internet. Um, I'm one of those. I'm hotspotting from home. 
Uh, we are working on that as a university, and indeed I suspect we're working on that as a country in order to uh, ensure that everyone has the access that they need to have. Um, if you are struggling with this, do let us know. Uh, let your course coordinator know. That's part of the, the point of the uh, Student Engagement Day, uh, is to troubleshoot all those kinds of issues. If you don't have a device or if you have limited internet capacity, uh, we need to know because then we can think about what the alternatives might look like. So we are, the Blackboard has all sorts of material that is available to us that we haven't necessarily used as much in the past as we will now. So we'll be very carefully uh, thinking about people's engagement, uh, ensuring that they are able to access the materials that they're able to access, uh, that they're able to do the assignments that have been set. Uh, so we'll be working really hard from our end to make sure no one falls behind. But from your end, it will be also really important that, that you communicate uh, if you're struggling, if there are issues, uh, as you normally would, let your lecturer know, let your tutor know, let your course coordinator know, uh, because if we know that there are issues, then it's much easier to address them. Well, again, it's a, it's a very similar, um, similar response to some of my earlier comments. We just don't know. We will, as has been the case all the way through, we'll be guided by the government officials. Uh, we'll be guided by the guidance that we have around the different alert levels. Um, so once we know, then we'll be able to um, communicate with you. Uh, as we have been doing all the way through. So, so it is a really tough time. You know, it is a really uncertain time. There are lots of questions that we just don't know the answer to. But as soon as we have answers, obviously, we'll, we'll share those with you. Hall payments, again, we don't know yet. Uh, obviously, this is not something that is just about our university. Uh, this is something that uh, affects all universities. So there are discussions going on more generally uh, about what lockdown might mean for things like uh, hall payments. So again, as soon as we have some answers, uh, we'll let you know what those are. Well, firstly and importantly, TRI2 will start on the day that TRI2 has always been scheduled to start on. Uh, we will see closer to the time uh, what that looks like, what alert level the country is at uh, in terms of what that will mean for our physical presence or otherwise. But at this stage, we expect TRI2 learning uh, whether it's uh, in person uh, or virtually, uh, to continue, to continue as, as normal. Uh, we've got a little bit more time to think about try to. So some of the things that we're um, are doing quite quickly at the moment, we'll have lots of learning to bring to bear on try to in terms of the quality of uh, the student experience, if it is in uh, if it still continues to be in a more online format. Well, yes, that's exactly why we've given everyone time to make this change, to meet this challenge. Uh, we are all adjusting and we do understand that. Uh, and again, your course coordinators, your lecturers, your tutors, they'll all work very carefully with you to ensure that you are not disadvantaged by that. So my best wishes to you. Um, again, just to say this is 
extraordinary circumstances. This is a big change. It is a big challenge for all of us. I'm really proud of how we as a university are rising to this challenge. Um, and there'll be lots of things for us to sort out as we work our way through this. But I'm sure with a little bit of goodwill and, and a lot of patience and a lot of learning, uh, we'll get there. So in the meantime, kia kaha, stay safe, stay well, and keep learning. Hi, my name is Stuart Brock. I'm the Vice Provost Academic, and I'm here to answer some of the questions you've been raising about online delivery. Student Engagement Day is a day for course coordinators and lecturers to connect briefly with students and to outline what new engagement expectations they have of you as we move from a face-to-face -to, -face to an online mode of delivery. This will give you as students some degree of certainty about what will happen when teaching recommences on April the 28th. We can't require students to sit an exam on campus right now. So the teaching period has been extended by three weeks, but the trimester will end on time as there are no exams. So there's no need for a three week exam period. That means there'll be no impact on the one week mid-year break or the start of trimester two. No student will be required to submit any assessment from now until Thursday, April the 3rd at the very earliest. Course coordinators are acutely aware of your circumstances and are likely to be very accommodating of any reasonable extension request that you have. If you're anxious about due dates, make sure you approach your course coordinators now. They will be understanding. Well, it's a break just like any other break. Although there'll be some exceptions, in most courses, you'll be able to stop attending any scheduled engagement activities like lectures, tutorials, or labs. Nonetheless, you should still keep up with readings, study and engage with your course materials, just as you would in any other break. That will vary from course to course. Online teaching might involve Panopto video recordings, Zoom lectures, or online discussion boards. To find out more, log on to your Blackboard courses and engage with your course coordinators on Student Engagement Day. We all must stay within our bubble, potentially all the way through to the end of trimester one. Consequently, we cannot offer traditional exams as a means of assessment. Course coordinators at the university, along with lecturers across the whole country, are working through alternative forms of assessment that can be completed online. You will have clarity around what those alternatives are in the coming weeks and certainty before teaching resumes at the end of the month. we won't be returning to face-to-face -face delivery of lectures this trimester, even if we do go back to alert level two or three in the next four to six weeks. The reason is that we cannot predict when the government might escalate to level four again in the Wellington region. The university needs to be prepared just in case we do. We'll wait and see what we can do in second trimester, but rest assured, we will be working to give you the best possible learning experience, no matter what constraints we face. We recognize that moving to a new mode of delivery will present us all with challenges. Students will have to navigate a new way of learning. There will be uncertainties about how assessment and engagement occur. Plans will have to change or be put on hold, and there'll be an intense nine week period of teaching. Students struggling with these obstacles are encouraged to engage with our support services, either by calling 0800 040404 or emailing info at vuw.ac.nz.